Some good news out of Australia. The New South Wales Rural Fire Service says the Gospers Mountain Fire is finally under control. This is how the massive fire looked less than a month ago as it threatened Sydney. It has scorched more than 500,000 hectares. hectares. Prime Minister Scott Morrison is facing harsh criticism for his handling of Australia's fires. He says that he will propose a national review of firefighting efforts. And he recently admitted on Australian TV that he regrets the government's initial response. Large areas of the country remain under high to very high fire danger. Well, aid, as you've been showing your reporting here on the show, has been pouring in from all around the world for those impacted by the wildfires. And one Australian actress is taking support a step further. She's actually giving back giving, by giving something up. Take a look. I will be going through the process of giving up my green card and saying goodbye to a life in America. I'm going to be here in Australia doing the work I can to make a difference here because the time is now. Like I said, this is war. Well, you recognise her. She's from Orange is the New Black. Actress A.L. Stone announced her major decision on Twitter. She joins me now live from Sydney, Australia. Yale, thank you very much for being on the show. Explain to our viewers right around the world why you're abandoning your green card because, uh, you know, as viewers will know, it's a very sought-after immigration status. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's very hard to obtain. And the decision to abandon the green card didn't come lightly. It came in the shadow of this incredible climate disaster that we're experiencing here in Australia with these unprecedented bushfires ravaging our country. Um, to be clear, I will still fly. And the decision I've made is that when I do fly internationally for work, I'm going to be donating 50% of any of my earnings towards people who are actively reducing CO2 emissions or working towards absorbing them. So my decision to uh, abandon the green card means I won't be flying consistently between Sydney and New York, which is obviously a very long flight uh, and produces a lot of CO2 emissions. Yeah. And it's my way of embodying the change that I would like to see globally that I would like to see leaders take and you know obviously I'm one very small citizen and a very large and complicated process but I've realized that I need to embody that change that I'm not seeing mm. in our leadership. Well kudos to you for doing that because it is a sacrifice what will that mean for your work though? It's going to negatively impact my work, um, but what I'm really positive about is the impact it will have on my ability to make change here at home. And that's really where I have power as a citizen, first and foremost, a citizen with a child who's looking to a future that, that looks bleak as it's painted at the moment. But I want to have a really hopeful vision for her. I have to. There's no alternative. Um, so for me, the sacrifice of giving up potential work in the United States, uh, pales in comparison to the significance of clean air, clean water, a world where we're not completely overrun by wild climate events. Do you think, Elle, that the other actors can follow suit? Because, you know, Hollywood, as, you, as I'm sure you heard from Ricky Gervais, um, speech has been accused of hypocrisy. Should Hollywood, should actors be doing more, at least in terms of changing their habits? I'm not in the business of telling other people what they should or shouldn't do. I know mm. I'm having lots of conversations with lots of people in all kinds of industries who are saying, look, I've been thinking this too. Do I need to fly so yeah. often? Uh, can I be more intentional about how and when I fly? And to be very clear, again, I will continue to fly because I need to as an actor. That's, that's how we do our work. We do it in person. Um, but we can make statements like the one I've made, which is okay. I'm going to donate 50% of my earnings towards things that really enact change and reduce CO2 emissions. Um, I think that if people are feeling that, that inkling, that there's something there that they could be doing more or being more thoughtful about how and when they fly, um, then they should follow that instinct. Uh, I think our personal behaviour 
does have a ripple on effect be it with our neighbours, with our parents, our friends, or with a huge social media following. Our actions have yep. impact. And sometimes we feel powerless in the face of these huge calamities, and for good reason. But to come back Let to ourselves and say, OK, what can I do? How, how can I make that change? Yeah, we all have to start taking responsibilities for the world that we see around us and uh, the causes that it has had. You heard, I'm sure, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison basically saying he regrets his initial response to the fire. Take a listen and we can talk after that. You know, there are things that I could have handled on the ground much better. These are very raw emotional environments. I've got to say that 95% or thereabouts of the responses I've had in these cases have been very positive and, 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 and very appreciative. But David, these are sensitive environments. Um, they're very emotional environments. Um, Prime Ministers are flesh and blood too and how they engage with people. Ayel, from what you've seen on the ground there, is his apology enough? Well, I would, I, I commend an apology. I think it's always a wonderful and difficult thing to acknowledge when we haven't done things uh, in the best possible way. Uh, I think what he's referring to is sort of one-to-one -one engagements with, with uh, people on the ground. And I think it's great to acknowledge that things could have been done better and more sensitively. Uh, for me, what concerns me most, um, given that he is the leader of our country, is the fact that we haven't had really ambitious changes to our carbon emission output. So our goals right now, to me, are a little under where they should be. Um, mm. You know, we've been arguing back and forth about having carryover credits for our Paris Agreement. To me, that's not courageous leadership. That's not the visionary leadership that we need in a time like mm. now. And, and I commend Scott Morrison for saying, hey, I could have done mm. better. And I would invite him, as I'm sure many other citizens would, to say, you know what? Our targets weren't ambitious enough. And and it's okay to revise policy and say, we realize now that the pressure is mounting and that this is a very serious moment and we need to up our target limits and say, hey, we can do more. We can have ambitious goals for the changes that we make in the future. We can come back to the Paris Agreement and surpass mm. those targets wildly. And that that would be a really positive thing. Yeah. And a lot of people are arguing that Australia's contributions yeah. are, are very small in the face of other countries like the US, mm. China. To me, that's Absolutely. not a meaningful argument. We as a nation, we need to be a symbol of what's possible. We can take that onto yeah. an international stage and say, hey, look at our ambitious targets. Look at how we're making change yeah. and hopefully be able to inspire change in other large mm. nations. Yellow, yeah, you're truly inspirational. Kudos to you for doing this. Uh, your little girl, I'm sure, will be very proud. Uh, incredible role model. Thanks very much for joining us.